being here. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll yield back. Thank you. The gentleman yields back, and the chair now recognizes the gentleman from California's 29th district for five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, there are real abuses right now on the part of social media companies, uh, not only in America, but around the world. We talked about a lot of them last week with, uh, when the CEO of TikToks was before us. Um, there's a real need for accountability here, and reforming Section 230 in a targeted and thoughtful way is going to be a big part of what we should be doing in Congress, and hopefully we'll get around to doing that. Uh, many bills have been introduced, but we haven't been able to pass the legislation. Hopefully we'll have success this time. But the conversation that the majority seems to be having back and forth with some of the witnesses today is a bit bizarre to me. Conservative censorship seems to be what a lot of uh, my colleagues are focusing on, but there's a lot more going on, especially when it comes to life and death issues for the American people, especially American children. The idea that the big fix we need um, to Section 32 is that we should be preventing social media companies from taking down harmful content. Like I said, we should definitely make sure that they're taking down content that is harming, especially our children. Um, that's not what I've been hearing from my colleagues uh, last week, and I'm not shocked that we're hearing the same thing today. So I'm going to uh, use my time to talk about very real mis- and disinformation that targets vulnerable communities like the predominantly Latino community I represent in the San Fernando Valley. I'm glad we have an actual expert here, Mr. Overton, to explore this. I've seen firsthand how powerful social media misinformation and disinformation created vaccine hesitancy, which actually has cost human life. I've told the story of how my mother-in-law, whose primary language is Spanish, asked me if it was true that there were microchips in vaccines. That came from her Spanish-speaking colleagues who spend way too much time on social media, who, by the way, all of them in their 60s and 70s, these are not children, who actually were convinced or, or led to believe that there are microchips in the vaccines. Other Spanish language misinformation said that vaccines would lead to sterilization or alter your DNA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We know the companies do a terrible job taking down Spanish language misinformation and also don't do a very good job of doing, pulling down um, misinformation and disinformation in English. And we know that this lack of content moderation doesn't make social media better. Like some of the witnesses today suggest, it makes it dangerous. So my question, uh, first question is to you, uh, Professor Overton. If we follow some of the proposals here today and alter Section 230 in a way that would limit the ability of platforms to moderate content like mis- and disinformation, what could be the potential consequences for communities like the ones that I just mentioned a minute ago? Thank you very much, Congressman. Things could be worse. Things could be worse in terms of medical misinformation, political disinformation, scams in terms of economic. And, and you focused on it in terms of content moderation being uh, key. That was the original point here in terms of prodigy and a concern about platforms not taking down bad stuff because they were afraid of being sued. That's the whole point of it. Thank you. Uh, we also um, know that election mis- and disinformation is a huge problem and another one that often spreads unchecked on platforms when it's in Spanish. We saw in the run-up of the 2022 midterms that election misinformation in Spanish was widespread on YouTube and other platforms. Uh, Professor Overton, I know this is one of uh, special interest to you. Uh, can you talk a bit about the special harms associated with spreading information uh, that misleads voters and why it's important that social media platforms have the ability to remove uh, such content. Well, this is incredibly important because voting is preservative of all other uh, rights. And we have seen polarization in terms of us being pulled apart. We've seen foreign interference in terms of Russia, Iran, other entities uh, dividing us. We've also seen voter suppression in terms of targeting, for example, in terms of 2016 particular uh, communities uh, uh, targeted. Uh, so there have been some studies that found that this work is, is still happening, these activities in terms of uh, operatives, uh, financed by Russia and Iran, but folks who are in places like Ghana and Nigeria, 
uh, scamming and basically changing our political debate. It's, it's a real danger. One of the things that people don't realize, just because they see it in print, doesn't mean it's news. It's right. just opinion. Uh, and so thank you so much. My time's expired. I yield back.